everybody. My name is Rebecca Glenn. I'm an emergency management specialist at NYU Langone Health. Um, and thanks for having me today, uh, John, for asking me to speak. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how NYU Langone Health is using VOC and the um, systems we built within it and how um, maybe it can help somebody out there or somebody who's gone through the same things that I have while building the system. So first, a little bit about NYU Langone, um, just to give you some context of what we're working with and our stakeholders. Uh, NYU Langone Healthcare System is an NY or New York City-based health system. Uh, we're in Manhattan and Midtown. We're really close to the Empire State Building, but we also have uh, faculty group practices and family health centers all through the New York uh, City area. So we have Long Island, we have Brooklyn. We're really far stretched. We have four sub uh, or four acute care hospitals um, and one standalone ED. So we're a really big health system. We're continuing to grow. We have uh, about 300 um, off-site facilities as well. So like I said, we're, we have to communicate with each other and we all have to be on the same page um, if we're going to accomplish our goals in emergency management. So why? Um, I guess why do we need technology and why as um, NYU Lingone Health did we need this system? Um, and so like I was saying before because we're such a big healthcare system we need to be connected and we all need to be on the same page. Um, and also uh, a problem has come up it seems like throughout this conference or that we've all been talking about is uh, justification for tracking what you're doing. Um, as emergency managers we always get pulled into incidents and we always uh, get pulled into other things so it's really important that we're saying where our time is going um, and so that's a really that was one of the goals when creating this project is okay you're getting this call at 3 a.m. are we tracking it and how um, are we calculating that time um, and so I thought the best way to kind of show what we've done is to start with um, our we have an 0900 daily uh, ops call every day and that this is kind of the first rollout that we did with VOC of using it internally so I just want to walk through what that nine o'clock call looks like every morning and how as a team we're using the system so um, yeah and just really quick uh, I'm going to kind of segment this into three sections so the first section will be program management of EMER the ses second section will be uh, situational awareness and how we're using the tool in that aspect and the third will be activation um, it's going to be more heavy on the pro program management side because that's really where we're using it a lot um, but it's really cool stuff what we're also doing in the situational awareness and the activation portion so first like I said program management um, so when you log into VOC, this is what our team sees. Um, we're making it very easy for the end user, so everything's linked. Um, when you get on, it says, okay, I want to get on to the daily EMER operations call. What we see every day, the same dashboard, and the link is right there. So uh, like every organization, we have people who are more tech savvy and less tech savvy, so this is an easy option to link straight to where you're going. Um, so this is our daily operation call dashboard. So this is the same um, platform that everybody on the team is looking at every day. And like I was saying before, it sets the battle rhythm. Um, so you can see who can check in and, and who's on the call. You can see what the agenda of the call is going to be every day. And you can also see um, one member of the team is assigned to listen to the 835 daily safety briefing, which is basically what's going on in the hospital. Are there any admin issues? What's the census? Um, are there any things we should know about at a hospital operations level? So um, we have our team members who listen to that call fill out this form. Um, very, really easy. It takes like two minutes. Um, or less, it takes like 30 seconds of just getting in the information and putting it in and then everybody has that information the rest of the day. Even if they're not on that 9 o'clock call, um, this is a, a, a jump off point for our team. So after that, the next section of our call is uh, going over the weather. And so we get our weather from a lot of different sources. And so this is solving the problem of having 10 different tabs open getting di from different information it all lives in the same place and it's live so this is true information up to date um, that's getting pulled in every day from different sources and again this is um, a public link actually um, and it's where where we're living and seeing the same information um, kind of a side note and I'll get into this in more detail but we also send this weather dashboard to our leadership so for winter weather planning um, hurricane planning we can send this link out to our leadership and they can all see what we're seeing um, so it's it's kind of again an, a, a place to land a place to look back to 
And then f the uh, final portion of our call is um, what's happened in the past 24 hours. So have we got any calls that we need to know about? Um, has there been any incidents and any events? Um, and again, it, it all lives here. So we're all seeing the same information even if you're not on that 9 o'clock call. Um, so we had two calls and from different locations, what they were, what step did we get to in, in the activation process. Um, and we can also see who is on call. So for every different location that we have, we can, we can quickly access that information. Again, this is uh, saving us the task of opening 10 tabs and getting information from different places. Um, a newer feature that we rolled out is uh, the significant events. Um, so our emergency operators at NYU Lingo, we have two emergency operators who are dedicated to um, going on about the city and anything, and will notify us about anything that's happening. Um, they actually fill out a, a quick form in VOC. It fills in here, and it's um, our significant events. And uh, if you actually click click for the map, it comes up as a map of the city. So we live in New York. There's a lot of demonstrations. There's a lot of protests. There's a lot of parades. There's a lot of big events. Um, so it gives a, a, a big picture of what's happening in the city and what we need to be paying attention to today or to that day. And, um, again, if it's Saturday and, and we decide that we want to, it's, it's uh, 11 p.m. on a Saturday and we want to know what's going on in the city or if there's anything we didn't know about, it's right here. Um, and it's live and it's, it's real, um, true information. So, as I was saying before, we have the two emergency operators um, and we get calls. So our emergency manager on call will get a call. Um, and we implemented a policy when rolling this out that if you get an emergency manager call, then you have to fill out this form within 24 hours of receiving that call. Um, again, this is for tracking purposes because it shows where our time is going. It's making sure that that 3 a.m. call is getting recorded and that we account for that. So uh, at the end of the year when we have all these calls tallied up, we can actually see how many staff hours went to reacting to these calls, um, getting up at 3 a.m. It's putting a number, a quantitative number to that action, uh, which was an issue we were we had, we had dealt with in the past. Um, as you can see, it's by location, a brief summary of event, when did it start, and then and this is the calculation por portion, hours devoted to the incident, so that's a uh, figure from the, two, the start and conclude time, and then how many staff were involved. So I t you times how much time to how many staff members are involved, and that's your total staff hours. So it's doing this for every um, call and for everything that rolls up into an incident. We know exactly how much time and how much staff are attributed to that. Um, so kind of a little transition to our um, training side. So like I said, we're, we're all over the place. Everybody's doing trainings at 6 a.m. Sometimes people are doing it at 7 p.m. that night. Uh, we need to know what people are doing and when they're doing it and when, when those trainings are completed for numbers purposes at the end of the year and just for um, us to know and be able to look back on and know where we need to target. So every time we do active shooter prep talks, we do mass decon trainings, um, you have eight days to fill this out after uh, your completed training if you were the facilitator and it tells us what, what type of prep talk you had, where it was, um, who was involved, who do we need to contact if we need to go back to that location. So this came up when we were, um, it was during a meeting and, and it was the Office of Science and Research. They said, you know, we need more prep talks. We need more active shooter prep talks. I feel like this building is getting missed, like it's not getting them whatever. And we were able to look back on this inventory and be like, actually, we've done 16 this year and these are the dates, this is who was contacted and we know exactly when it was. Um, so it comes in handy when you're like, no, I'm pretty sure we've done that. You can actually have a record of it. Um, and again, this is uh, kind of uh, one of our dashboards. So it's our completed training active shooter prep talk dashboard. So we can see um, where we've done them, who's done them by staff member. So if we're like, oh, you know, Becca, you only have two. You need to pick up the pace and you need to do more active shooter prep talks. Um, it's an easy way for program management to delegate those responsibilities. Um, and also if you're uh, C-suite or your leadership wants to know where your resources are going and where those trainings are happening, it's an easy, uh, pretty way to show your C-suite. Um, and another function that we do is uh, the staff meeting. So we have a weekly staff meeting and all that data that you're aggregating through the week lives here. So we can see, okay, we did 54 hour sorts exercises this week. And again, that's that calculation between how long that ex exercise is and how many staff were devoted to it. Um, and we, we also do how many hours were devoted to um, 
calls this week? How many calls did we get and how much how many hours did that attribute to our time? Um, and we also do a staff meetings quad chart. So this was another way for our staff to get used to using the system. Uh, they'd fill out a chart, uh, um, a staff meeting quad chart. It would go in there, um, and it, it keeps our staff meetings on pace and makes sure that we stay away from the one-on-one -on -one conversations and really get the big picture of what everybody's doing in our department. So I'm going to move now into the situational awareness piece. Um, this is pretty cool stuff. We've been working. We've probably been building this for. A, a little under a year and really uh, the data collection probably six months. So this is what our emergency operators look at and what they see when they're um, when they get an incident. So they can submit a new incident or they see something and this is also linked to that uh, significant events map that we were talking about before. Um, so they can open a new incident and then they can update reports from that. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like and how we receive, like, yes, we can always access this dashboard, but we also get emails to show us when a new event has been added and what that looks like. So these are the two different emails that uh, you potentially could receive when something is going on. So if um, our emergency manager on call receives a call, they receive this one, and we know, okay, Caitlin's getting a call right now. There's a fire safety alert in this location. Our emergency operators are directly contacting with us, and it also... Um, helps with duplication so that Caitlin's not letting us all know that she's reporting to a fire safety alert we already know it's already in our inbox um, and the difference is it's really only this is the difference but this is um, if, if our emergency operators are just monitoring an event and they just want to hey we see this is happening we know it's happening it's in your inbox recognition on both sides that we both have eyes on the job um, so in our activation portion um, so when we are, we're doing a network integration program and it basically we're turning on all our EOCs on all our different locations and how we're using this uh, VOC dashboard is this dashboard is up in every of the EOCs so when we're on that uh, first call that that NICS briefing or the um, ICS briefing they're seeing in real time their problems addressed in our uh, unresolved issues so it, it gives that everybody's on the same page, everybody's seeing what the problems are, and they're also seeing where it's being taken care of. So those are our coordination bridge numbers, and if in the meeting we're saying, okay, comms and marketing, you're on this line, uh, the number is there, um, the access number is there, and everybody knows where that problem's being taken care of. Um, so everybody's looking at this on the same page, and this all, will also go out as a, um, a link in that initial alert to get on the call. So everybody is looking at it, no matter who, where you are in the organization. Um, and so that's all I have. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. And if anybody else is using VOC, I'd love to hear what's working for you guys and um, how you're using it.